Look at these sleeves. It's all just so wide and wonderful. I'm taking up a lot of space, a lot of cloth. Bibliosophie. Truth be told, I'm already not completely sober. It was this is martini, gin martini. It's quite good, a little funky, a little weird, but I'm happy with my work. And it was quite filled to the brim, and um, I am feeling it. I am feeling it, friends. So this might be a this might be a, a bit of a rollick. Let's uh, let's strap on in. Hello, my name is Sophie. Welcome to my channel. As of my posting this, it will be, at least if everything goes to plan, we'll see, it will be May 21st and it will be Gemini season. And I am a Gemini. My birthday is on May 25th. So I'm just cuspy and I am taking a page out of Renee's book at So I read this book and I'm making a video about being a Gemini and the books I recommend for Gemini season. I think this is a glorious conceit celebrating birthdays and self and books and stuff and personality traits. It's really fun and so when she posted that I immediately thought aha I want also to do this. So let's talk about what is a Gemini a little bit first. Um, I don't really go into, go in for, I should say, um, astrological stuff, if we're going to be perfectly honest, but I am, as much as I'm bemused by it, I'm also amused by it. I would honestly, truthfully, really love to know in the comments, please, I'm begging you, give me this birthday present. Am I a Gemini? I think Geminis get a really bad rap which is fine. I'm okay with that. And I'm, I am legitimately very curious if I come across as a Gemini and I want you to tell me. So that's my assignment to you. What are some Gemini traits? I was looking through the internet and kind of distilled it to uh, a few things. I mean, the thing that it amounts to is really funny. What I'm consistently seeing is witty as all get out. Charismatic, outgoing, which yeah, uses humor as a crutch, witty or funny. I don't know if I use humor as a crutch, but I do think I am actually witty. I'm realizing as I grow up that I am a funny person. I always considered myself not a funny person when I was a child and a teenager, and I think, I think in the right circles, I kill. Thank you very much. I make some really great Latin jokes, for instance. So, um, could talk to a brick wall. Again, I think that goes with the charismatic and charismatic. I, did I say that? Like a word in English that exists? Editing Sophie will see. Uh, I could talk to a brick wall. So yeah, that goes with the outgoing. I'm a performer. I'm actually very shy in some ways, but I'm also, you know, a performer. I make my livelihood talking to people. So I get it. Arguments as flirting. Yes, guilty. Absolutely. fucking -witly. I definitely, yes, do that. And that's all I'll say about that. Knows a little bit about everything. I hope that I know more than a little about some things, but I do actually often worry that I'm a bit of a dilettante in that regard and that I only know a little about everything. So, you know, these work. Communicative, absolutely. I'm definitely communicative. Curious and inquisitive and occasionally nosy. I would say that I'm not nosy, but I'm definitely very curious. I'm not that curious about people's business, actually. I don't really go in for gossip. I am a very good person to tell a secret to because I won't repeat it. I also don't feel the need to know about your secrets. I I don't take it personally if you don't want to share something with me. Um, however, 
in terms of especially learning and why things are as they are, I'm definitely very, very curious and impulsive. I would say that I probably personally am not so, so much, but in some ways, yeah, why not? So anyway, those are, that's my review of a lot of Gemini traits that I culled from ye old internet and uh, my review of myself. Um, look, it's my birthday month, so I'm allowed to be very, very self-centered. Also, this is my channel, so it's literally about me. Now, some books that I think exhibit some various Gemini behaviors. Um, yeah, I pulled some various um, books from my shelf and some recent reads also that were on my mind. And yeah, I don't know if you agree, but these seemed Gemini-ish to me. Some of them, of course, it's really just because I like them, but um, you know, whatever. All right, first up, Trick Mirror, Reflections on Self-Delusion by Gia Tolentino. This is a collection of essays. Uh, it's wonderful. It's very, very funny and very smart. Um, yeah, on being, basically. Um, it's great. I read this a couple of years ago when it came out and really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it had a lot of buzz. Uh, Tolentino is a New Yorker writer. There's going to be a couple of New Yorker writers in this list, actually. Um, I think the knows a little bit about everything slash curious thing. Um, yes. I then also said Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. I don't have a physical book of this, um, but it's a very, very short novel. I've talked about it on this channel before. I read it last year, uh, just barely last year, I guess, uh, and really loved it. Uh, it's a coming of age story for a young, bright, uh, slightly disillusioned, but also in some ways slightly naive a uh, woman named Lucy, and it's just wonderful. I partially thought of it because I think Lucy does use humor as a crutch to a certain extent, Use uses a certain amount of distance, is very intelligent, very curious, but also kind of a little bit keeps people as at arm's length. But also Jamaica Kincaid is a fellow Gemini and was born on my birthday as well, or I guess I should say that I was born on her birthday. So that's a, the fun fact that I like to always share. I share a birthday with Jamaica Kincaid, and I'm quite proud of that. Then I listed Rimbaud, a biography by Graham Robb. This came out in 2000. Um, it happens to be just a very good biography of Rimbaud. Um, I'm pulling this mostly for the subject matter rather than necessarily specifically the biography itself, although the biography is excellent and very funny and very compelling. As you can see, it's a big chunker. Uh, Rambu was a um, bad boy poet of the 19th century, and his life is riveting. Honestly riveting. In, in just crazy. This is a guy who wrote extremely uh, modern and revolutionary and sometimes very smutty poetry all before he was I think 21 maybe? He was very young. I forgot actually. Uh, then he stopped writing and he became a pirate. So it, this is just a full-on rollick of a time. Oh, that's my word apparently for this video. I think I've used it twice. I don't know if it'll make it in the full edit. Um, but it's, it's just, it's wild. This is a wildlife and recounted very well and very entertainingly. Then I listed White Girls by Hilton Owls. This is another New Yorker staff writer. This is another series of essays, also funny, more um, melancholy in some ways, super smart, just such a broad array of references. I loved this collection. 
Um, I reread parts of it actually at the beginning of either last year, no, the year before, because I hadn't read it in several years. And <clears throat> excuse me, I I just really love it. It's it's personal and heartfelt and interesting and super smart. So yes, and I love his writing in general. I like his thought process, uh, kind of along the lines of heartwarming, interesting. And by heartwarming, I don't mean you know like. Hallmark heartwarming. I mean, literally warms your heart, feeds your heart. Uh, beautiful writing. A little devil in um, America, which is what's the notes in praise of black performance uh, by Hanif Abdul Rakib. Um, this came out a couple of years ago. I love his writing. This is a series of essays on different um, black artists. Uh, music artists in America throughout the 20th century. And it's so learned and interesting and, you know, bordering on academic in, in, in terms of its breadth and thought process, but has such a poetic voice. Uh, Abdul Rakib is a poet as well, and his writing is just really beautiful and Yes, I also love this book. Uh, then I also, I don't have this as a physical book, but I thought of 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. Uh, this is a really, really short epistolary, I don't even, I can't remember if it is, if it calls itself a novel or if it actually is just a series of letters. I think it might be just a series of letters. I'm sorry that I didn't look this up beforehand. Um, but yeah, this is just a long epistolary relationship between Helene Hanf um, or her avatar, if it's fiction, I don't think it is, um, and a British bookseller. And she's looking for a bunch of, a series of specific books throughout the decades, and it's their relationship. So it's definitely, it's curious and biting and funny and um, both self-aware and not self-aware, which I think, I feel like maybe that's a Gemini thing, right? To be a little delusional, but also a little self-aware simultaneously. Am I, is, am I making that up based on the traits that I looked up? I don't know. I'm, I'm inventing this, uh, but it's very, very charming, very fun. Um, and it's also super, super short. So I recommend that. If you like books, if you like books as objects, the culture of finding books, uh, it's truly a delight. Next up, I have another one that I don't have in physical form, uh, which is Abigail by Magda Zabo. I've been talking a lot about Magda Zabo on this channel recently and in general, love her. Uh, and Abigail is wonderful. Abigail is, uh, following a young girl, young teenager-ish sort of age, uh, who is at a very, very strict girls' school in Hungary during World War II, and that I picked very much for being curious and definitely nosy. And that also is definitely delusional. She is not so much, there's, there's some funniness. She is, our main character is obviously extremely bright and then also extremely stupid in some ways. Um, there's kind of a theme for me in these books of very, very, very intelligent young female narrators who are somewhere between girlhood and young adulthood or teenagers um, and who are just really smart and then also missing just something. Along those lines, uh, I also picked O Caledonia by Elspeth Barker, which I read at the very end of last year. And similarly, our main character is so smart and so infuriating in some ways. I loved her. I can imagine her being annoying to people who read the book, but certainly also people in real life. She's a know-it-all. Um, she doesn't know it all about specifically Latin, so my my mind, you know, went out to her, my heart went out to her, and just fell in love with her. Um, and similarly, just this, like, 
not quite fully grown intellectual carapace. Uh, so I don't know why I've decided that that's a Gemini trait. Maybe it is. I think I saw charismatic and curious and I thought to myself the, the kind of growing pains of being really, really, really smart and really into the world, but also, you know, stumbling, still trying to figure out your, your awkward um, legs, let's say. Uh, then I also picked Night Bitch by uh, Rachel Yoder. Um, I enjoyed this novel. It was really fun. It, it's very funny. I think it definitely is a kind of uses humor as a crutch uh, sort of situation. Um, our main character is that thing that has been written about a lot recently, which is the creative mother who is trying to figure out how she can balance her artistic life and her motherly life and um, her solution, the solution that she comes up with or that her body comes up with is to basically turn into a an animal, a night bitch. So to turn into like this sort of hound creature. Uh, it's very weird and I enjoyed it a lot when I read it. Then I mentioned, or not mentioned, I picked uh, Cassandra at the Wedding by Dorothy Baker, which I read earlier this year. I've been mentioning it a lot. Obviously, there's definitely a bias of things that I've read recently because I'm thinking about them still. So a lot of these are books that I've read in the past couple of years. That's how it goes. Uh, I would say that our main title character of Cassandra is very curious, very, very nosy, very infuriating, funny, charismatic, very pugnacious, um, impossible to deal with in some ways. Uh, she is going from Berkeley down to um, either Southern or Central California, I can't quite remember, but more Southerly-ish California for her twin sister's wedding, and she's a pest, honestly. She's a wonderful, intelligent pest in many ways, and she's a wounded person, and she's kind of bringing a lot of turmoil into everybody else's life, because there's turmoil in hers on uh, one, it's, it takes place on Midsummer Night um, over the course just of a couple of days, but really mostly around one day. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this, and I think that Cassandra is a good representation of some of the bad traits. I, I don't want to make all of my my Gemini um, uh, protagonists and books uh, only positive, you know? I know that we can be insufferable, and I feel like she could be insufferable in that way. I also picked Slave Play by Jeremy O'Harris. I read this a couple of years ago, and then I saw it actually last year in its revival. I saw the very last performance of the revival run, and it was incredible to see. Uh, this is hilarious and horrifying. Um, it is about three interracial couples who are at a like play acting plantation basically to work out their um, couple um, uh, at, for as couples therapy and it's just really hard to watch and read in some ways and awkward and super funny and really really heart-wrenching and I think depending on who you are and what your experience is you will find different things in whatever categories, but it was really, it was wonderful to see it. I mean, if you if you can watch it in, in a theater, it's wonderful, but I think it's also really interesting to read it as a play. Uh, so yeah, I picked that. I also picked Lote by Shola von Reinhold, another book that I recommend a lot. Our uh, main character, is very very curious and she is uh, looking through the archives of art history for 
a specific kind of ghostly figure that she is partially dreaming about and partially has half confirmed evidence of the existence of so it's it's like um detective story through art history and a personal uh, exploration of ethos. It's funny and weird and a really good satire of art world and the art um, kind of clinic or, or world or the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Grants, art grant life. Um, yeah. I have recommended this book before. I will continue to recommend it. I think it's wonderful. It is fun and interesting. So um, another author that I talk about a lot is Ali Smith and I also picked How to Be Both. I don't have my copy of this because I lent it to a friend almost a year ago, maybe more than a year ago, but I'm also holding hostage a couple of her books, so it's fine. It's a quid pro quo situation. This is another actually kind of difficult teenage girl uh, protagonist. Apparently that's what I decided Geminis are. Am I correct? I don't know. This is my channel. I'm right. It's fine. Uh, this is a dual story of comings of age and coming to term with grief, um, creation of self, realizing what your identity is, what your sexuality is. Um, it's also very much about art history and things and the world and being curious about the world. This. Uh, Ellie Smith is herself, I think, very, very, very curious about so many things and knows about so many things. And so what I really appreciate in her writing is how much it's peppered with references and referentiality, even as a concept. Uh, so I think that really ticks off the curious and knows a little bit about everything and also humor. There's a lot of humor as a crutch as in the process of really, really deep grieving. Um, yes. Okay, I've got two more. No, I've got only one more, because I already talked about O Caledonia. The last, oh no, I do have several more because I picked up a few more books when I was thinking. Um, Figure It Out by Wayne Kostenbaum is a series of essays on art and writing. Uh, and I think it definitely ticks the boxes of funny, witty, extremely charismatic and extremely wide-ranging in references. Uh, yeah, I think it's very, very Gemini in terms of all the traits that I have mentioned before. But as I was walking around pulling books from my shelves, I thought of a few more. Uh, Nabokov, definitely extremely witty, extremely curious. I picked Strong Opinions, which is another series of essays. I think Essay collections to me seem very much like knowing a little bit about everything and you can really show a lot of facets of yourself. These are essays on a bunch of stuff, mostly about writing. I haven't read this collection in a while. Uh, I was really into Nabokov when I was a teenager, which seems about right, you know? Um, but yeah, just a bunch of editorials, a bunch of strong opinions on a huge range of topics and written in his glorious, glorious prose. And then I did have to pull Susan Sontag, definitely curious, definitely knows at least a little, if not more than a little, about everything. So I picked Against Interpretation because I think it's a really good introduction to Susan Sontag. It has fantastic essays in this collection, including Against Interpretation, it has notes on camp, uh, so if you want kind of a good Susan Sontag primer, um, I think this is a really good place to start. I mentioned this in my Judging Books by Their Covers video because it also has a fantastic cover. Uh, this edition does, at least. And I'm going to mention one bonus related to Susan Sontag, which is Sigrid Nunez's um, memoir of Susan Sontag, Sempre Susan, which I don't have a copy of but it is a really good 
um, view, portrait of Sontag in her most kind of difficult and vulnerable and funny and annoying. And I think, I think Sontag was, you know, a very convoluted character, which also seems Gemini-like. So that's my long list of books. Those are my things that I'm going to talk about, that I talked about. Oh, I'm going to finish this martini. I'm going to do some finals work because it is almost the end of the semester. What happens when you're a late May child in the U.S. Um, academic system is that your birthday is usually around all of your final projects. But there's, you know, the end of the school year in mind. In France, the school year ends about a month later, so I never really got that. But when I started going to school in the United States, late May was always end of semester vibes. Anyway, let me know what you think. Truly, I'm going to say it again. Roast me if you want. I know the Geminis have a reputation, so let me t let me know. Let me know if I'm a Gemini and in what bad ways. It's okay. I can take it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.